morning. Grace to you and peace in the name of the one who is the creator, redeemer, and sustainer of life, the holy triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I greet you, my beloved brothers and sisters, in the name, precious name of the one who is the Lord of the church and the shepherd and the bishop of our souls, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And it is my privilege to welcome you to this morning's worship experience. I pray that God's spirit would touch you and enfold you in such a way that you would truly feel God's convicting power and find strength to continue to do that which God has called you to do. So come let us worship God together. I invite you to hear this call to worship. Come and worship all you who love and serve the Lord, outsiders and insiders, old timers and newcomers, the young, old and the in-between. Come as you are, for this is God's house, a house of prayer for all people, and God welcomes each one who comes in his name. I invite you now to hear our opening hymn, the piano instrumental version of one of the great hymns of the church. We have come into this house and gathered in his name to worship him. truly we have gathered come into this house and gathered in God's name to worship him in spirit and in truth I invite every heart to pray uh, as we pray the prayer of invocation oh God we have entered into this sacred space 
to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, we have come into this holy sanctuary where we find ourselves to give you all the glory, honor, and praise. But God, first and foremost, we would be remiss if we did not thank you for all of the very many blessings you have bestowed upon each and every one of us. We thank you, God, for keeping us and sustaining us uh, and for blessing us, God, even when we don't deserve it. So God, you have created us uh, for the purpose of worship that we might glorify your name, O oh God, and bring your name honor. And so God, we invite your spirit into our space on this morning. God, fill our hearts and minds that we might concentrate on you and that which you would have us to receive in this moment that God, we might draw, but ever so closer to you. God, help us to recognize in this moment uh, where you are calling us to and what you are calling us to do and where you are calling us from, that God, we might hear your voice as your sheep and come running. So God, use us in spite of us, and we pray that all that is said and done in this worship experience, in this sacred space, in this sanctuary, in this your house, God would be to your glory and to your honor. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And by faith, we count it done in that same name. And all of God's children said, amen, amen. Beloved, our scripture reading from this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 56, verse 1, followed by verses 6 through 8. And I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. And it reads as follows. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those who have already gathered. This is the word of God for the people of God. And for God's word, we certainly give thanks. I now invite you to join me uh, as we recite and reaffirm our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. Third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. I now, beloved, invite you to prepare your hearts and minds to receive the proclamation of the word as we hear the instrumental version of one of the great hymns of the church by the Reverend Dr. Charles Albert Tenley. We'll understand it better by and by. And I invite you, as you are led by God's spirit, to sing along uh, with the song, uh, if you know the words. Hear now God's melody.
truly we will understand it better by and by. Beloved, our sermon for this morning uh, will be coming from the scripture which has already been read unto our hearing, Isaiah chapter 56, verses 1, followed by verses 6 through 8. However, I would like to reiterate our theme passage, which comes from Isaiah chapter 56, verse 1, which simply says, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. Maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. For a few moments, I'd like to preach simply from the thought, keep on doing the right thing. Keep on doing the right thing. Won't you pray with me? A charge to keep our have a God to glorify, an ever dying soul to save and fitted for the sky, to serve my present age, my calling to fulfill, made all my powers engaged to do my master's will. Oh God, again, we are so grateful for the blessing of this day. And it is our collective understanding that you have chosen for whatever reason to use humanity for your glory. But God would baffles Darius each and every day he wakes up is why you chose somebody like him. Nevertheless, God used Darius in spite of Darius that the words of his mouth and the meditations of his heart would be acceptable in thy sight, O oh God, for you are his strength and you are his redeemer. God, let not your word fall upon deaf ears, but may it find fertile soil within someone's heart. Take root and bear much fruit. Speak, Lord, for your son and your servant is listening. In Jesus' name we pray, and by faith we count it done in the same. And all God's children said, amen. Keep on doing the right thing. Keep on doing the right thing. In our particular passage of scripture uh, for this morning, Isaiah is writing to the remnant of Israel, to all of God's people, to remind them of God's promise to them to bring them from out of exile and out of Babylonian captivity. Uh, in the beginning passages of the scripture, uh, Isaiah encourages them and implores them to continue to maintain justice and to do that which is right in the sight of the Lord for God's salvation uh, is coming soon and God's deliverance uh, will soon be revealed. Uh, jumping down to verse six, he also uh, reminds them of the fact that even the foreigners uh, uh, who connect themselves with the Lord and fulfill all of God's commands who honor uh, uh, the name of the Lord and offer themselves to be his servants and who keep the Sabbath, uh, uh, those who keep his covenant. Uh, God says he will bring all of these persons one day uh, onto his holy mountain uh, and make them joyful uh, in his very house. Uh, their burnt offerings uh, and their sacrifices of praise uh, uh, will be acceptable in God's sight uh, and on his altar and his house uh, shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Uh, yes, thus says the Lord in the latter portion uh, of the text this morning, uh, uh, the one who gathers the outcasts of Israel. Yes, uh, uh, those who are outcasts, those uh, uh, will be gathered along with the remnant of Israel. But my brothers and sisters, uh, as we engage the theme, keep on doing the right thing, uh, I've come to realize and I've come uh, uh, as I continue to wrestle with many of the issues of this text uh, uh, that it's hard uh, uh, sometimes to do the right thing. Uh, uh, I've discovered in my living uh, that sometimes it can be very difficult uh, uh, to, to do the right thing. Sometimes uh, it can be very inconvenient uh, uh, to do the right thing. Sometimes uh, uh, it can be very uh, uh, disheartening to do uh, uh, the right thing, especially uh, when we are surrounded uh, uh, by so much corruption and evil uh, uh, that is running rampant in the world. It's difficult uh, to do the right thing, uh, uh, especially when we find ourselves surrounded uh, uh, by those uh, uh, who do not hold in high regard uh, uh, the morals and values that God uh, has instilled in each and every one of us. Uh, uh, it's hard to do the right thing. Uh, it's hard to do the right thing uh, uh, 
uh, when folk are pressuring you uh, and trying to push you uh, to do the exact opposite. Uh, it's hard to do the right thing uh, uh, when you're being tempted uh, uh, on every side uh, uh, with the wrong thing. It's hard to do the right thing, uh, uh, my brothers and my sisters, uh, 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 when it seems as if uh, 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 the wrong thing uh, uh, is more convenient and more beneficial. Uh, but can I help somebody this morning? Uh, uh, the grass uh, isn't always greener on the other side. Uh, uh, and so it behooves us uh, to always do the right thing as those uh, who are followers of our Lord and Savior, uh, uh, Jesus the Christ. And that is what Isaiah uh, uh, is simply trying to help uh, the remnant of Israel remember. Uh, 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 it doesn't matter where you are. Uh, uh, yes, you might be in Babylon. Uh, you might be exiled from your land. Uh, you might be in captivity. Uh, uh, but God still uh, has an expectation of you uh, uh, to live uh, uh, as God uh, would have you to do. Uh, and my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, that same principle uh, uh, is no different for us. Uh, it doesn't matter the situation uh, in which we find ourselves. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, who's in our circles. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter uh, uh, what's going on. And it doesn't matter uh, uh, how we feel. Uh, 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 God has an expectation uh, uh, of us as his children uh, to continue to do uh, uh, what is right in the sight uh, uh, of the Lord. Uh, I don't know my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, but you can't go wrong uh, uh, when you do the right thing. Uh, and we all know and understand uh, uh, that there are consequences for every action uh, and every choice that we make. Uh, uh, and so it always behooves us uh, and is beneficial uh, uh, to do what is right in the first place. Uh, 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 that way we are honoring God uh, uh, and we are living up to the standard uh, in which God has set uh, uh, for each and every one of us. Uh, uh, and especially in a day like today, uh, uh, where it seems as if corruption uh, uh, has enveloped all uh, of society and corruption uh, uh, and envy has enveloped uh, uh, leadership. Corruption and envy uh, uh, has enveloped uh, uh, and taken over the hearts and minds uh, uh, of God's people. It's time uh, uh, for the remnant of God. It's time uh, uh, for you and I to be that example uh, uh, that says uh, uh, this is how you are to live for the Lord. Uh, uh, now does uh, that mean that we're always going to make the right choice? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, uh, does that mean uh, uh, that we're always going to choose the right path? Uh, uh, no, we're not. Uh, uh, does that mean that we're always going to say the right things uh, uh, and do the right things? Uh, uh, no, it does not. Uh, uh, we're going to mess up. Uh, uh, nobody's perfect. Uh, uh, we all have faults. Uh, uh, but the one thing uh, uh, that I love about the God that we serve uh, is that despite uh, how often we might mess up, uh, despite the mistakes that we've made, uh, despite the times we've gone down the wrong path, uh, we serve a God uh, uh, who looks beyond our faults uh, uh, and sees our very needs. Uh, uh, you ought to just thank God this morning uh, uh, if you can testify uh, that God looked beyond your faults, uh, looked beyond what you used to do, uh, looked beyond what you used to say, uh, and looked beyond who you used to be, uh, uh, and he saw uh, the potential on the inside of you uh, to become something greater uh, than what you were before. Uh, I don't know about you, but I thank God for the fact uh, that he saw the best in me uh, uh, and he sees uh, the best in you. And don't worry about what you've done. Don't worry about what folk know about your history. Uh, Bible says uh, God has taken our sins and cast them into the sea of forgetfulness, never again to be remembered. Uh, uh, no more. Huh? So folk really don't have anything to hold over your head huh? because God has forgiven you huh? and God has shown you huh? what is good and what the Lord requires of you, as Micah says, huh? but to do justice, huh? to love mercy, and to walk humbly before your God. So, beloved, we serve huh? a holy and righteous God. And God made it very clear in the Bible huh, that he expects those who follow his word and his way to live holy and righteous. In fact, uh, 
But when God uh, is instituting the Ten Commandments, uh, he tells them, you are to be holy for I am uh, holy. Uh, now, beloved, uh, we've got many examples in the Bible uh, of what happens uh, uh, when you don't do the right thing. Uh, I can't help but to think about uh, Adam and Eve when they were in the garden. Uh, uh, God told them, uh, he set them in the garden, told them, uh, uh, every tree that is in the garden, uh, uh, you may have and eat of its fruit, uh, except for the tree uh, that's in the center of the garden, uh, the tree the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Uh, you shall not eat of that fruit, uh, uh, for in the day that you do, God told them uh, that you shall die. Uh, and so they're walking through the garden one day, uh, uh, and all of a sudden they encounter the serpent uh, uh, as they gaze upon the fruit uh, uh, from the forbidden tree. Uh, uh, and the serpent tells them, uh, 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 no, uh, uh, you shall become like God. And they knew uh, 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 what the right decision was uh, uh, because uh, uh, Eve indicated and Adam indicated uh, uh, in that particular passage, uh, uh, no, God says we're not supposed to eat of this fruit, uh, uh, for in the day we do, we shall die. Uh, but the serpent deceives them uh, by telling them, God knows you shall not die, uh, but in fact, you shall become like God. Uh, and so now, uh, uh, because of the deception, uh, uh, envy crept into the heart, uh, uh, and they ate the fruit. Uh, and in that moment, they discovered uh, that they were naked. Uh, and they tried to hide from God uh, while he was walking through the garden in the cool of the day. Uh, uh, but he found them, uh, uh, and they tell God, uh, Lord, we are hiding because we're naked. Uh, uh, and God asked the question, who told you uh, that you are naked? Uh, uh, did you eat the fruit from the tree I told you not to eat from? Uh, uh, and because of their sin, uh, because of their disobedience, uh, uh, because of their lack uh, of obedience to God's command, uh, they were kicked out of the garden. Uh, Adam had to till the ground, uh, uh, and Eve suffered pains in childbirth. Uh, beloved, uh, it all it always pays uh, to do uh, the right thing. Uh, as I continue uh, uh, to move, uh, I'm also reminded uh, uh, of Moses when uh, the children of Israel were in the wilderness. Uh, <clears throat> the children of Israel uh, complained about being thirsty, uh, and they told Moses, find water for us to drink. Uh, the sec this was the second occasion, uh, uh, and this time on the second occasion, uh, uh, God tells Moses uh, uh, to strike the rock and water shall come forth. Uh, but instead of striking the rock, Moses, uh, instead of speaking to the rock, rather, Moses strikes the rock, uh, uh, and water still comes forth. Uh, uh, but God tells Moses, uh, uh, because of your disobedience uh, uh, and for your lack of speaking to the rock, uh, you shall not enter uh, unto the promised land. Uh, beloved, there are consequences uh, for not doing the right thing. Bible makes it very clear. We have so many examples uh, uh, of individuals who decided to go their own way uh, and they suffered the consequences for Lot's wife. Uh, they were told to get out of Sodom and Gomorrah. And when they left, they were told not to look back as they were leaving the city. Lot's wife uh, just couldn't help herself. Uh, she turns around and looks upon uh, the city. And because of her disobedience, she's turned uh, into a pillar of salt. There are consequences for not doing the right thing. Consequences that sometimes uh, are more than what we bargain for consequences uh, that could very much make or break uh, our lives, consequences uh, that could have uh, a significant impact uh, on our lives uh, and the lives of those connected to us. And because of that, fact alone, uh, that should be motivation enough uh, to do the right thing, both in season and out of season. That should be motivation of us, for us to do the right thing, huh? 
whether folk are looking or whether we're in secret. That should be motivation enough to do uh, the right thing because uh, my brothers and my sisters, uh, we don't wanna find ourselves uh, on the wrong side of God's judgment. Uh, we wanna find ourselves on the right side of God's judgment uh, instead of on the side of God's wrath. Uh, I'm gonna say that again. We want to find ourselves uh, on the side uh, of God's judgment uh, instead of the side uh, of God's wrath. Because believe me, God's wrath uh, is coming. God's judgment is coming. So we must be sure that our work uh, is done and we must be sure that our house uh, is in order, as the old saints uh, used to say. Because God is a righteous God. God expects us to live in a righteous and holy manner. Live a life uh, that is holy and righteous before him. And that requires us to do intentionally, strive to do the right thing and do what is right before God and in the sight of our brother and our sisters. And in doing so, we honor God and we magnify his name. But God also expects us to do right uh, by those God has connected to us, do right by those who love us and do right uh, uh, by our brothers and our sisters, uh, regardless uh, of what we think about them, regardless of our feelings towards them. God expects us uh, to do right uh, by them. And that's summed up in the golden rule, do unto others, as you would have them to do unto you. So beloved, we're living in a world where right is no longer popular. We're living in a day and age uh, where doing what is right and just uh, is no longer uh, the motivation behind uh, what folk do. And so God uh, is calling us uh, to be witnesses uh, and to use and live our lives in such a way that we strive continually to do what's right in the sight of God so that others might look upon our example huh, and see what it looks like to be a Christian and a child of God huh, who honors the Lord huh, uh, in their word and in their deed. Huh. So as we continue to wrestle with the, the many issues of the text, uh, uh, I believe the question the text leaves us to specifically consider is this, what do those who continue to do the right thing uh, have to look forward to one day? What do those who continue to do the right thing huh, have to look forward to one day? Because remember, huh, if there are consequences for doing the wrong thing, huh, uh, I would surmise uh, that there are blessings and rewards uh, 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 for doing the right thing. There are consequences for doing the right thing as well. Uh, 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 and so what do we as Christians uh, uh, and followers of God have to look forward to one day uh, if we continue to do what is right and just uh, in the sight of the Lord? Uh, well, the first thing, beloved, we have to look forward to uh, is that we can look forward to the day uh, uh, when God brings all of, when God will bring all of us back together uh, uh, under one roof. Uh, uh, in verse uh, Eight, seven of the text, uh, 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 God says, uh, all of these I will bring to my holy mountain. Uh, uh, all of these I will bring to Zion, my brothers and my sisters. Uh, uh, it's been several months, uh, uh, as we all know, since we have gathered <coughs> together in person to worship God uh, uh, in spirit and in truth. It has been uh, uh, since March the 8th, uh, uh, when we last darkened the doors uh, uh, of John Wesley United Methodist Church, uh, uh, and entered into the sanctuary uh, uh, to worship God uh, together in spirit and in truth. Uh, uh, it's been quite a while uh, uh, since we've seen each other as our church family. Uh, it's been quite a while uh, uh, since we've been able uh, uh, to touch and agree uh, uh, with our loved ones. Uh, uh, it's been a long time uh, uh, since we've been able to see those we love uh, 
Uh, and I know even though we're feeling isolated right now, like the Israelites did uh, uh, when they were exiled uh, out of their land and in Babylonian captivity, uh, but they could look forward to the promise uh, uh, of when God would one day bring them all back together uh, into the land that God promised them. Uh, uh, and I stopped by to declare uh, to each and every one of you uh, that you can look forward to the day uh, uh, when God will bring all of God's children uh, uh, back together. Uh, uh, we can look forward to the day uh, when we will be reunited uh, uh, with those that we love. Uh, we can look forward to the day uh, uh, when we'll be able to grab our neighbor by the hand uh, uh, and give one another uh, a great big hug. We'll be able, uh, uh, we can look forward to the day uh, uh, when we'll see not only each other, uh, but we'll see God face to face. Uh, as the song says, when all God's children get together, uh, oh, what a time we're going to sit down by the banks of the river. Uh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, beloved, we will sing and shout the victory. I don't know about you, but when the saints go marching in, when the saints go marching in, oh, I want to be in that number. When the saints go marching in. And I pray, beloved, huh, that you will be in that number as well. Huh? So the second thing, huh, so we can look forward to the day when God will bring all of us back together under one roof. Huh? Now we know not the day nor the hour. Could be morning, night, or noon. Nobody knows just how soon. Huh? But we have the assurance huh, that one day we will see each other again and we will worship one another again, and we will celebrate with one another again. And so I look forward to that day. I wait in great anticipation of that day, knowing that I will be with all of God's beloved children, singing and shouting and giving God praise for all that God has done and for God's grace and mercy which brought us back to the place where we first believed. And the last thing, beloved, that we can look forward to if we continue to do what is right and just uh, in the sight of God is we can look forward to the day uh, when God will finally fill our hearts and minds uh, with his unspeakable joy. In the latter part of verse seven, <coughs> when God promises to bring everybody together on his holy mountain, huh? he says he will make them joyful in his house of prayer. Beloved, uh, I don't know about you, huh? but it's difficult to find joy in the most adverse situations. Huh? And if I were to tell the truth and shame the devil, it's difficult to find joy, huh? especially in this time of pandemic. Huh? <clears throat> when emotions are running high, when stress levels are, are higher than normal, huh? uh, it's difficult to find joy. Huh? Uh, when you're in the middle of a storm, it's difficult to, uh, to find joy huh? in the worst of your problems. Huh? Uh, it's difficult to find joy, huh? uh, especially when it seems like the sun huh? is refusing to shine in your life. Huh? Uh, but I hold fast to the word uh, in the Bible that says weeping may endure for a night, uh, but joy will come in the morning. Uh, beloved, the sun one day has got to shine again. Uh, uh, so I invite you uh, and encourage you uh, uh, to find joy uh, even in the midst of your worst situation. Uh, find joy uh, even in the midst of your worst circumstance. Uh, find joy. Uh, even in the midst uh, of that raging storm, find joy uh, because the joy of the Lord uh, is your strength. Uh, God's joy uh, will sustain you. Uh, God's joy uh, will keep you. Uh, and God's joy uh, will give you the strength uh, to run on uh, and see what the end is going to be. Uh, thank you for God's joy. If you got joy this morning, uh, I dare you wherever you are, uh, to shout hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord, huh, for giving me joy. I've got joy bells huh, ringing down in my heart. And I get joy when I think about what the Lord huh, has done for me. And so, beloved, huh, find some joy. Find God's joy because it's there. Find God's joy because happiness huh, won't last always. Huh, but joy huh, will be joy in all times and in all places under all circumstances. Huh. God's joy huh, will keep you huh, and God's joy will lift you huh, even out of the deepest pit in which we find huh, ourselves. Huh. So beloved, we can look forward to the day when we see one another again, when God brings us all back together. And in that moment, we will truly experience and come to know what it means to have the joy of the Lord. <clears throat> and we will rejoice in all that God has done. And we will rejoice because we know we will know in that moment that it was nobody but the Lord that brought us through. And it was nobody but God who kept us and sustained us even in the midst of our darkest situation. And so my brothers and sisters, and lastly, we will truly experience what it means to have God's joy when we continually strive to do that which is right and just in the sight of God. Beloved, keep on doing what's right because when you do what's right, you can never go wrong. Keep on doing what's right because when you do what's right, you'll be able to stand flat footed on God's promises. Keep on doing what's right so that you will find yourself on the side of God's judgment rather than on the side of God's wrath. Keep on doing what's right because you don't want to one day find yourself standing before the judgment seat of God and God say to you or to I, you had a chance to do what was right during this situation but you decided to do otherwise. Keep on doing what's right. Because right, because doing what's right always pays off after a while. This is the word of God for the people of God and for God's word, we give God thanks. As we now engage the invitation to Christian discipleship and service, I would invite you to search your own heart Search your own mind and reflect on where you believe you stand with God. And maybe there's one who wants to make a profession of faith by accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior for the first time. Huh? This certainly is your opportunity to do so. And maybe there's one who needs to reaffirm their faith, uh, who says, I know and love God, but for whatever reason, uh, I decided to go my own way and do my own thing. Huh? But now I recognize the error of my ways uh, and I'm ready to go back to what I know is right. Uh, and that's the Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Uh, I invite you uh, uh, to search your own heart as you respond in your own way. Uh, reflect and respond in your own way uh, to the proclamation of God's word and what he's calling you to do. Won't you join me in prayer? Eternal God, holy and righteous, everlasting Father, we give you thanks for your grace and for your mercy, O oh God. We give you thanks uh, for showing us the way and setting us on the right path. We give you thanks, O oh God, for giving us the courage uh, to do what is right. We give you, the, we give you thanks, O oh God, uh, for placing within us a moral compass uh, to help guide us along this journey called life uh, uh, and for setting our moral compass, oh God, uh, uh, on those things which are holy and righteous uh, 
and for giving us the wisdom and knowledge uh, <clears throat> to be able to tell the difference uh, uh, from right and wrong uh, and for giving us uh, uh, wisdom enough to be able uh, uh, to choose right uh, and to choose holiness and righteousness, uh, uh, God over ungodliness uh, uh, and, and, and over ungodliness, God, uh, and sin. And so we pray, oh God, as we continue to, uh, uh, to live our lives in service to you, uh, that you will continue uh, uh, to be the North Star uh, to our moral compass. Be that North Star God uh, uh, that will guide us uh, uh, and put us back on the right path. Be our North Star, uh, oh God, so, so when we get lost, uh, uh, we can find our way back to you. Uh, uh, we can find our way back uh, 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 to what we know uh, uh, is holy and righteous, to find our way back uh, uh, to what we know is good and acceptable and perfect uh, uh, in your sight, oh God. Uh, uh, we ask for your forgiveness uh, uh, for those things in life that we've done wrong, and we ask your forgiveness uh, for every sin that we've committed uh, uh, in word or in deed, uh, uh, both knowingly and unknowingly. Uh, we thank you, God, uh, for looking beyond uh, all of our wrongdoings uh, uh, and seeing within us uh, uh, the potential you have for greatness. Uh, uh, and so, God, we dedicate ourselves in this moment to you, uh, and we offer ourselves and all of our lives and who we are, uh, uh, God, that we might be examples and witnesses uh, uh, of what it means to love God and love neighbor, that we might be examples and witnesses uh, uh, of what it means uh, uh, to live holy and righteous, what it means, oh God, uh, uh, to be your hands and feet uh, uh, in this world. Uh, use us, God. Uh, so that your name would get the glory. God, uh, uh, we don't want any of the glory. Uh, we don't want any of the attention. Uh, uh, but God, we want you uh, to draw folk closer to you. Uh, uh, so God, move us out of the way. Uh, that God, your children uh, uh, and your people uh, uh, might see the Christ uh, in each and every one of us. Uh, uh, and God, we don't live this life so folk can follow us. Uh, but we live this life. <clears throat> so that they can follow you. Huh? God, we're going to lift you up. Huh? We're going to lift you up, oh God. Huh? And we're going to magnify your name. Huh? God, so that we aren't exalted. Huh? But God, we come to preach the God, not to exalt the preacher, not to exalt the pew, huh? but to preach the gospel simple, full, and free. And God, you said if you be lifted up from the earth, you would draw all men unto you. So God, hide us behind the cross that your people might see more of you and less of us. And God, when we are tempted to do the wrong thing, convict us, God. Convict us to the point, God, where we can't sleep and we can't rest until huh, we make the choice to do what's right. God, keep us and we'll be forever kept. Love us and we'll always be loved. Bless us and forever blessed we'll be as we pray the prayer together that Jesus taught when he said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. That will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, as we prepare uh, to go down from this place and into the world to continue to serve the Lord just have a few brief announcements that I'd like to share with you. First and foremost, uh, I want to offer uh, my sincere gratitude, appreciation, and thanks uh, uh, to all of you during uh, my recent uh, period of medical leave. Uh, I want to offer thanks to each and every one of you uh, uh, as the people who are called John Wesley United Methodist Church for all uh, of the prayers and expressions of love and support that I received from so many of you. Uh, uh, while I was recovering from my surgery and even during the moment uh, 
uh, where I had to undergo uh, an unexpected emergency surgery. I truly thank God for the fact that God uh, uh, has brought me through uh, uh, that circumstance. Uh, uh, and now I find myself uh, uh, on the other side uh, of God's blessing. So I continue to solicit your prayers for God's healing uh, as I continue to heal uh, and recover. And I just thank each and every one of you again for every call, every card, every gift, uh, every message, every word of encouragement, every expression of love uh, that you so graciously bestowed upon me. Uh, those things uh, will never be forgotten and you have uh, no idea uh, how eternally grateful I am uh, to you and for you, uh, to God for all of the wonderful ways in which you've shown your support. And lastly, I want to thank uh, First Lady Jennifer Renee Butler uh, for her willingness to provide ministerial coverage uh, <clears throat> for our abbreviated Sunday morning worship service and for our prayer meeting uh, in my absence. I'm so grateful uh, for her leadership and for the gifts uh, in which she brings uh, to the fold. Uh, and I bless God uh, uh, for such a marvelous job uh, in doing so and for her willingness uh, uh, to stand in my stead as I continue to recover. And I want to thank you uh, for offering your unwavering support to her uh, as you so warmly received her leadership uh, uh, during worship and during the prayer meeting uh, for these past two weeks in which I was on medical leave. Again, thank you so much. And I pray that God will continue to bless each and every one of you real, real good. So beloved, as we prepare to go down from this place, I invite you to hear uh, the words of the doxology, praise God from whom all blessings flow. And if you know the words, I invite you uh, to sing unto the Lord uh, uh, along with the song. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Receive now, beloved, this word of benediction. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the throne of his grace with exceeding joy. To the only true and wise God be glory, honor, dominion, and power. Henceforth, now and forevermore. Keep on doing the right thing because you can never go wrong when you do what's right. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all of God's children said together, Amen. Beloved, we have entered into worship. Let us depart to serve. Be sure you hug some, hug as many folk as you can today and tell them that you love them. And I'll see you next week. Take care. God bless. Be well and stay safe. <laughs>